All right. Hello to all my divas, bros, X's and O's. My name is Tristan, and today for this video, we are going to be doing a literary analysis of the Sorcerer's Apprentice um, for one of my literature courses. Uh, it's my first video for YouTube, so bear with me. A little couple stumbling blocks, but I guess we'll get there. I'll go ahead and get into my, my paper. For my literature review, I chose The Sorcerer's Apprentice by John Turtletaub and starring Nicolas Cage alongside Jay Bargell and Alfred Molina. The story takes its name as well as a uh, particular scene about an hour or so into the film from Walt Disney's Fantasia where we have Apprentice Mickey Mouse enchanting a mop to do his chores for him. Uh, and even further down the rabbit hole we have the original work by Johann uh, Wolfgang von Goethe titled Der Zauberlerling, or The Sorcerer's Apprentice, where Disney took its inspiration originally. As a live action uh, Disney movie, Turtle Tops, uh, The Sorcerer's Apprentice uses lighthearted humor and slapstick comedy to appeal to its audience uh, along with the CGI effects when magic is being used. According to IMDB, Master of Sorcerer Balthazar Blake must find and train Merlin's descendant to defeat Dark Sorcerer's Morgana Le Fay. While concise and to the point, it does leave out that our protagonist will have more than one obstacle to overcome. Uh, we have our main objective, which uh, happens to be our ultimate antagonist, uh, our main antagonist and his protege, which is uh, Melina's um, Horvath, uh, as well as the quirky nature of one of our protagonists and his stumbling blocks with learning magic and having a love life. From a technical standpoint, we have a movie that utilizes camera work, lighting, sound, uh, computer editing and effects and acting in order to convey certain moods and themes throughout, uh, which I feel was done quite well. And of course, any movie or any production would have to utilize any and all of those things. Uh, not having seen the movie in quite some time, several years actually, uh, I looked at uh, the production quality from a newer perspective, uh, and I was setting it up for failure because I felt uh, for an assignment, if I'm trying to do an analysis, I'm trying to figure out where it went wrong as opposed to where it went right uh, to try to figure out how they could do it better. Um, but surprisingly, I found myself uh, surprised at how few bad things I would have to say about it. Jay Baruchel, if I'm even saying his name right. Uh, while I do like the characters that he typically plays, he does have a kind of nasally voice which does great on me but that's more of a personal thing not really uh, anything on his acting but uh, he portrayed a convincing character thrown into a previously unknown world with uh, with believable reactions to various scenarios uh, being surprised at certain things whenever magic was being used whenever he learned a certain spell uh, whenever things were happening to him like a like Molina's character showing up after uh, 10, 15 years being trapped away in an urn. Uh, his reactions to being chased and trapped and things, I felt like it was believable enough. Uh, uh, seasoned actors Nicolas Cage and Alfred Molina portrayed uh, their respective uh, characters, Balthazar and Horvath, in a wonderfully convincing and entertaining fashion. Uh, Cage does a fine job of playing sarcastic and humorous characters with easygoing delivery, and from the few movies that I've ever seen him in, uh, Molina does a wonderful job playing charismatic villains. In The Sorcerer's Apprentice, we have various avenues to approach regarding an analysis. We could approach the uh, aforementioned original poem of the same name by Goethe, we could do the Disney Fantasia adaptation, uh, or we could do an analysis of the similarities between J.K. Rowling's uh, own Harry Potter. Regarding the similarities between the production and the Harry Potter series as a whole, we have quite a few, uh, and it's easy to miss if you don't look at the two comparatively, uh, especially if you're trying to separate Harry Potter as Harry Potter and then the Sorcerer's Apprentice as the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Uh, both contain a protagonist who was uh, previously ignorant of the magical world was thrust upon it by someone who was deeply ingrained in the culture. Uh, for the Sorcerer's Apprentice, we have Jay Brochel's Dave, uh, who was taught magic by uh, Nicholas Cage's Balthazar, and then in Harry Potter, we have Harry Potter learning it, uh, or at least being introduced to the world by Hagrid in the first book. Uh, they're both taught numerous spells, ranging from conjuring spells to transfiguration, and they're both ultimately responsible for the demise of their big villains. We have Harry Potter with Voldemort, and then we have Dave with uh, Morgana. 
Uh, where Rowling's Harry Potter was enamored by the world of magic, and there was an obvious separation from magic folk and non-magic folk, uh, J. Rochel's Dave Stutler had already established his life, his life in normalcy and tried to live a normal life while still learning magic. Both characters have their own feelings uh, to the magical world. Dave was, uh, he liked it. He, he was kind of apprehensive about the big responsibilities of being the primer lineage and having to defeat Morgana, uh, where he felt he wasn't prepared or he wasn't able to handle such a task. And Harry, uh, he absolutely loved the magical world. He was always afraid that he was going to be expelled from school or he was never going to be able to to stay in the magical world and be forced to live with the Dursleys forever. Uh, and finally, uh, the decision to consider magic and science opposing sides to the same coin in the movie was a wonderful creative choice to make. It offers wonder for younger audience members as well as a more positive outlook on the normally boring view science tends to have. Uh, Nicolas Cage's de delivery on the science behind magic flowed very well, and it didn't seem uh, forced or fake at all. Uh, understanding how previously unknown things operate can make for more natural works. Regarding that, uh, Nicolas Cage's delivery, I feel like the way he plays characters, how they always come off as kind of sarcastic or humorous, uh, very lighthearted, easygoing, I feel like that uh, contrasted with with uh, Jay's um, very high-strung, excited, nervous, uh, animated reactions. I felt like that those were nice foils to one another and it enabled them to, to, to be a nice uh, mentor who's experienced, who's relaxed and easygoing, and the pupil who's excited, uh, but very naive and very ignorant of how things tend to be. Um, and the fact that they wanted science uh, to be a part of a magical movie, probably one of my favorite things since I love science so much, and that science is basically explained magic, how we can use science to, to have things happen, to do things um, that normally we weren't able to do, and making it seem as though magic is simply a science that we have to master, that we have to understand makes it exciting for someone as nerdy as I am so uh, overall I like the movie um, the acting was very well done uh, I love the psychology behind everything I love uh, Alfred Molina's um, Horvath he always plays really nice uh, villains like I said um, if they had done a sequel I could see myself watching it um, but I'd be very very hard pressed to uh, find it as nice as the first one because in my opinion, I feel like there would be quite a lot to uh, live up to.